All right, so we're going to do the problem solving portion of communication. We'll look at some uh, different examples of that. Uh, we'll start with the, the honeybees. Uh, we talked about this before, with Ron Frick being one of that won the Nobel Prize for the bee dance. Uh, and there's really several different dances. There's actually the round dance, the sickle dance, and the waggle dance. The round dance is pretty much just food right outside. Uh, the sickle dance is one for a little bit farther away. And then the waggle dance is the one that is uh, very famous. And so that is the one that um, I want to explain. So uh, you can see right here, um, the round dance, uh, the sickle dance, and then the waggle dance. So very close, slightly distance, but still visual range. And then the longer distance uh, waggle dance, which we'll spend some time on. So the three different types. And so what I want you to know is the waggle dance uh, has been um, looked at quite a bit. And what they found is the effects on it is the hive temperature. Um, hive temperature during development, uh, the warmer it is, the faster the dance. And there's also chemical cues. Um, uh, and, and there are uh, several different chemicals that are released um, when uh, foragers come back to get more foragers to go out. And that may even signal when we talked last time in the first test about animal uh, bees changing from, um, you know, taking care of uh, nest mates and things like that all the way to eventually foraging. Uh, so let's go back to the waggle dance real quick and make sure we understand how this happens. And this picture here in the, in the bottom. So the hive is dark and it's vertical. So what they do is a bee finds food and it flies back to the hive and it lands and goes inside. And so it gets up on the, on the honeycombs, which again are vertical, and it's dark inside. So what they start to do is they start to walk in a certain direction. And that direction that they walk is, uh, has its angle um, from vertical. So here in this picture on the, on, in B is they're showing 40, 40 degrees vertical. Uh, so he comes, so this she actually probably uh, comes out and she waggles her butt as she walks in this direction, 40 degrees. Uh, and what they're finding out is this direction is telling the other bees what direction to fly for the food. So when they come out of the hive, they check the position of the sun and then they angle at 40 degrees and fly off. And then the waggle, the butt movement is tells them how far uh, that food actually is. And then they are caked with the food themselves. So they, the animals, the, the other bees are getting a sense of what they're looking for. So very cool. Yeah, imagine how much effort you had to do to watch all this stuff going on uh, to figure out what was happening. So Von Frick was uh, again, the person who uh, solved this issue. And so honeybees, very cool. Uh, ants, on the other hand, uh, recruitment pheromones. Uh, uh, ants don't fly, so pheromones work out well. Um, uh, and so what they do is as they find food on their way back to uh, the nest, they, they release chemicals, um, leaving a trail where the food is. And as the more and more ants go across, that trail gets stronger and stronger. Uh, if, you know, and, and I don't know if you've ever done this as kids, we used to do that, you got an ant trail. Uh, what you can do is just take your hand and wipe it right through the trail. And what you'll see is scattering when they hit it because you've jacked up the pheromone. Uh, eventually they'll fix it. They'll figure out there's nothing here and, and keep going. And um, so there's lots of outward path, but you can see the homeward path is, is very quick. And that yellowish line on the left there will get stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, and, and, you know, and it'll direct uh, the ants to food. And that's, you know, it's amazing how quickly they can find stuff. Um, and then uh, there are certain ants that will do this stri stridulating, which is uh, a kind of a signal where they are making a noise and, and moving their um, abdomens back and forth uh, to also communicate. Uh, humans use pheromones. We don't talk about it much. Um, one time I made the mistake of uh, asking about a human pheromone going online and finding one, and I, I didn't realize that'll take you to a bunch of porn sites. So, you know, you can do that on your own time. That's not, that's not a, a class assignment. Um, but if you think about what humans do, we, we, do, we make a big effort uh, of covering things up. Uh, uh, you know, we use deodorants and, and perfumes and, and colognes 
Uh, and so there is that very famous study uh, done with uh, males sle uh, sleeping in t-shirts. I think I mentioned that, but we'll just make sure we do it again. And so uh, uh, they, would, they would wear the same t-shirt for two, two weeks and they put it in a bag. And then ask uh, females uh, in this study uh, to smell it and to pick a, a possible mate. And it turned out what they did is, uh, for the most part, females would pick the one with the, um, the most different immune response. And the uh, theory behind that is you want your child to have uh, a very good immune response so you have the best of both worlds for mom and dad. Um, so, um, you know, even, even humans have pheromones, but although we, we spend a lot of money to, to hide it. Okay. And that's just stupid. <laughs> All right, so let's move it on. Uh, here's a cowbird, uh, and this is our um, nest parasite, brood parasite. Um, and we're, we're going to um, keep this simple. We'll talk about the, the, the parasitic thing later um, in more detail. But, but what you're going to find out is um, uh, the female is trying to attract a male, uh, and, and how much sound they're making. Um, uh, and it turns out if you do three calls of the same uh, repetition uh, uh, of the same bird, they don't react as much as if it is uh, uh, different. Uh, the correlation is that there's three different sounds, they, they, they have a tendency to call more, more males out there. Um, we also see this in blackbirds. Uh, it turns out uh, how long their note is held is determined by uh, how big a difference there is sexual dimorphism, which basically means the males and females uh, are different. And so uh, if, if some blackbirds, uh, uh, they're hard to tell if they're male or female. Um, we have brewers blackbirds, the color is a bit different here, but the size is about the same. And in some blackbirds, the, the male may be a little bit larger and brightly colored compared to the female. And as you get those more differences, what you find is um, the bird songs tend to be longer. Uh, and this is how they secure a mate. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm bigger, I'm, I'm prettier, and, and it's associated with the, with the sounds. Um, here we have meerkats, very, you know, if you, wa <laughs> you watched uh, um, Meerkat Manor, I guess I'm not even sure that's on anymore. Um, but these are in the mongoose family, which is, and is unusual for social mongoose, but uh, the idea is they're all standing up kind of watching for um, predators and they give out uh, warning and alarm calls. And the idea behind this is, again, um, the adults tend to do it more um, than the pups uh, and the scanning and the response uh, duration and all those things. So. Uh, uh, reaction time is quicker in the pups, but the other, uh, the other two uh, is the adults. Um, so know that. Uh, and then uh, there are some cheaters, <laughs> always. Uh, we talked about these uh, uh, before where um, the vervet monkeys, uh, where they'll give a call. Well, there are lesser males that may want something, and so they will give a call, uh, a warning call where all the, uh, male, the dominant males go running and then they can get in and take food and whatever. And that only works for a while. You know, it's uh, uh, once you do that too often, they'll figure you out and they won't necessarily respond to you. Um, so, and then deception and barn uh, swallows. They are for the most monogamous, but when the male's out, the female may go cheat. And so, and, and if you see this, um, especially in the uh, colonial ones, um, the nest building, uh, giving alarm calls very low, uh, egg laying very low for solitary breeders, but uh, colonial breeding swallows, man, that just jumps the way up. Um, and because what happens is the, uh, the swallow will go out to get food and he comes back. If his mate is not in the nest, he'll do this alarm call to get her to fly home. And so, um, yeah. Uh, and, and again, you see this not in solitary nesters, uh, but barn swallows are colonial nesters. They have a bunch of nests right next to each other for protection. And, but if, uh, to increase protection, that also causes uh, cheating because males are so close by. And that 
is the end of that recording. And